Hey, welcome back to Good Works Tractors. I got a good one for you today, talking about the five worst tractors you can buy 2022 edition. We did a video a year and a half ago, give or take, and covered the five worst compact tractors you can buy. However, we're gonna give you a different spin on that today, a different angle. Now I'd encourage you to check that video out if you haven't seen it. We're gonna give you the specific models in that video. Today's video is a little bit different perspective on that to try to help you avoid those pitfalls, making a bad decision. A tractor purchase is a big decision. You don't wanna make the wrong one, so stick around, we'll point you straight. Hey, really quick, we are proud to be sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. Tractors are naturally tippy side to side. So if you've had that experience, you wanna make sure it doesn't happen again, I'd encourage you to check out Bora, link down below. And we'd love to have you Join the family, subscribe, it's completely free. Hit that button down below, you'll get notified of new videos that come out. We have over 450 videos out there already, so a lot of stuff for you to take a look at. If you are in the market for something for your tractor, we sell and ship tractor attachments all over the country. Visit goodworkstractors.com. All right, well, let's get this party started. You know what? I want to start off on a high note. I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. Just talk about the bad stuff. So I want to give some love to the subcompact tractors in general. Those are one of my absolute favorite sub-markets, the subcompact sub market <laughs> that's out there today. They have kind of revolutionized and just transformed the whole compact tractor world in general. The 1025R, I think, is leading the charge with innovation, the ease of connection of their loader, of their bucket, of their mower deck, of their backhoe, just all around is just top notch. The Kubota BX is right on its heels, really coming out with some good innovations, but for me, the 1025 is second to none. All right, we gave you something sweet. It's time to take that medicine. Here we go. Now make sure you stick around because there are two tractors that are gonna be on this list that I would not take if they were free and I refuse to sell them anymore at my dealership. Before we get to that, I wanna share something about the tractor industry in general. You know, something a lot of us don't really know. You see it come up on forums from time to time, but there's really very few parent manufacturers. There's a lot of tractor brands that are out there, but they all roll up to just a handful of actual manufacturers that are making the chassis, the transmission, and the engines. All right, to give you a few examples, Examples of what I'm talking about. Let's talk about the manufacturer Daedong, which is a Korean company. They are the parent manufacturer of the brand, their primary brand, I would say, which is Coyote. Uh, in fact, they are now manufacturing the recently reintroduced Bobcat line of compact tractors, and they also have their name on the McCormick lineup as well. Now, they may not produce every single model within another brand's lineup, but they are going to have their fingers on it. TYM is another interesting one. Of course, they do have their own brand, but they are also making tractors for Branson, for Rural King. They used to make them for Cabela's. Bad Boy, the list goes on. There's a lot of other smaller manufacturers as well that they white label for. It's just interesting to know how one company can represent so many sub-brands. And then we're gonna have another pretty good sized company, LSM Trime, which of course is gonna make the LS lineup of tractors, but they also have their fingers on the CNH brands as well. So your Case tractors, your New Holland tractors, McCormick, Farm Track, some other brands. And again, this is not all of their tractors that they're making, but there could be certain series, certain subcompacts or compact models that they have. And this isn't necessarily a bad thing because it means that perhaps if you have one of these other dealers that are near you, maybe you have a New Holland, but you have an LS tractor. I had this happen a while back. I actually purchased just an LS tractor. I think it was a, a 47, 48 horsepower tractor. It came with a new Holland manual and the parts were one for one, the identical, the same exact thing. So it could work to your advantage to have one of these brands that works with a lot of different white label partners that they have because it can make it a lot easier for you to find parts if needed. And there is one that a lot of John Deere haters like to point to as well, which is that Yanmar makes the tractors for John Deere. Well, I do know that for a short period of time in history, I think it was the early 2000s, that was the case. Yanmar was making the tractors for John Deere, but that's not the case anymore. Yes, Yanmar does supply the engines and they've supplied the engines for pretty much every John Deere compact for decades and decades. They're an excellent top tier diesel engine manufacturer and you should be proud to have one in your tractor. But the persistent comment that Yanmar is still making John Deere tractors just simply isn't true and it's getting kind of old guys okay so first up on the list we're going to combine these two groups which are going to be rental tractors and auction tractors i've seen my fair share of rental tractors over the years and i can tell you one thing's for sure they don't get worked very easy you have all sorts of different operators that are on there renting for a weekend renting for a day renting for a couple hours maybe a week whatever it is they don't care they're just working it to get their job done they have varying levels of experience with the equipment now most quality rental companies do have good mechanics on hand they service they inspect they repair they're on a good program to make sure it's maintained as needed, but still, 
that doesn't diminish the fact that you have so many different operators, so many different scenarios that that tractor is being used in. For me, that is a situation I want to avoid. Now, oftentimes you find those tractors going up for auction and that kind of ties us into that. But typically, if you're seeing tractors going on auction, that means that they've been sitting on a dealer lot or some other location for a period of time. And no matter what they do when they lower that price, they're not able to get it sold. And typically at some point that sales manager is going to say, I want to get it off my books and clear it out. And they're going to take it to auction and let it sell for whatever it goes for. But if they couldn't get it sold while it was on their dealer lot, there's got to be a reason for it. And typically it is not going to be the price. It's going to mean that there's something else going on with it there. And for me, I don't want to inherit those problems. Now I used to buy tractors on rare occasion from auctions if I wanted to get a certain series or a certain model in. And I've all but eliminated that. I haven't bought a tractor from an auction in years anymore. I found that you don't get very good deals out there. I found that many auctions put a surcharge or a buyer's fee or some kind of a premium that can be anywhere from 10 to 20% depending what it is, which is just going to drive that price up even higher. I think that's something that a lot of buyers go into it not realizing as well. Now it's not that you can't find a steal of a deal from time to time at an auction but for the most part they are so popular there's so many guys that know what they're doing you're just not going to find those great values okay next up pretty much everybody in the compact tractor market wants a tractor with a loader of the hundreds or maybe it's thousands of tractors that i've sold over the years i can think of two of them that guys did not want the loaders on that we removed the loaders took them off and sold those separately every other tractor has had a loader sold with it sometimes we've bought tractors and then added the loaders ourselves to them if we can make the numbers work but that's very challenging and i always encourage folks do not buy a tractor i just had this conversation with a gentleman the other day he found a gem of a deal, a beautiful John Deere 790 tractor, but it didn't have a front end loader on it. You can't buy a new one. You can get a new aftermarket, but if you're looking in the used market, you're trying to save some money. So if you're saving money on a used tractor, you want to find a nice used loader to match up with that and have your savings all around. Well, it's almost like finding a needle in a haystack when you're trying to find a used loader to match your tractor. Typically, you don't want to have that shipped in, so it has to be within driving distance of where you're at. It needs to include the right brackets, all the right components to go along with it, and then of course, the price has to be right too. And if you're looking at something a little bit older, like that John Deere 790, it's not made anymore. There's no replacement series that have a compatible loader to put on there. That means that all those folks that have a John Deere 790 without a loader are constantly keeping eyeballs on the market, looking all over Craigslist and Facebook to try to see if one pops up in their area. So it's gonna drive the price up. You're gonna to have to jump on it right away it can be a long and tedious search. So using the 790 as an example, all those folks out there in the market right now that have that tractor model without a loader are constantly checking the market on Craigslist and Facebook to see what's out there, what's available, that's gonna drive the costs up. I've heard of guys searching for months and months, sometimes years and years, just to find a loader to add onto their tractor. Trust me, you're gonna be a lot better off passing on that 790 without the loader to find the right machine with a loader already on it, you're gonna be a lot happier. Now on top of loaders, you gotta make sure you have a quick attach connection between the end of that loader and your bucket. You do not wanna have a pin down bucket. It's another item I'm asked about constantly, which is can you sell me a conversion kit to make my pin bucket into a quick attach? Whether that's John Deere or Skids Deere quick attach, it's a very expensive proposition to do that after the fact. If you're ordering new, Try to get that option built right in. Don't get one of the goofy quick attaches that some of these manufacturers offer. Stick with the big ones, primarily the skid steer quick attach. And even if you're looking in the used market as well, pay close attention, ask that question if you can't clearly see it in the pictures. Make sure you have a quick attach bucket. That's gonna allow you to put on a set of pallet forks, a snow pusher, a grapple, a bale spear, all sorts of different attachments very quickly and easily. It's gonna open up a lot of options. You won't regret it. Now, I'm as big a fan of old tractors as the next guy. There's just something about a classic tractor. Chris and I grew up with a Ford 8N and 9N up on my grandpa's farm, but you know what? Those old timers just had a special skill set that unfortunately I did not inherit. And so a lot of you guys out there, you get nostalgic, I think, right? You see these cheaper price points of tractors like that 8N and that 9N, and you think that's what I wanna have. The downside is, is that they typically require more maintenance than modern tractors. And so you need to have that skill set, but you also need to have the ability to get those replacement parts when you need to, which can be harder and harder to find. But as with anything, typically, if it's gonna be older, it's gonna have more downtime, which means you're spending more of your time working on your tractor instead of working with your tractor, getting your projects done. And I get a lot of folks, they want to trade those tractors in on the newer tractors that I sell, and I don't want to take those on trading. You know, we want to sell 
uh, clean low R equipment here. We're very specific on what we want to carry. So this isn't knocking those older tractors. If you're a handy guy and you can figure it out, I'd encourage you to get one. But for a lot of folks these days that are just now moving out to the country, they weren't blessed with that skill set just like I'm not. So I'd stick to the modern day tractors. Now on that note, even for you guys buying the newer tractors, whether that's John Deere, Kubota, Coyote, Mahindra, LS, Bobcat, you name it, you still want to have that dealer support that's nearby. These newer tractors have longer warranties on them, long powertrain warranties. Many of them are five, six, seven years long. So if something does go wrong, you want to be able to take it in quickly to your dealer that's hopefully not 100 or 200 miles away, have them repair under warranty, minimize the cost to you out of pocket. You know, if you don't want to handle your service on your own as well, it's nice to have them right around the corner or at least in the next town over so you can take it in there, have those oil changes, the regular maintenance done. Now, fortunately, in the day and age that we live in, if you can handle the simple maintenance yourself, which a lot of you guys can with greasing, with oil changes and air filters and whatnot. For most of us, these tractors are typically going to require one major service interval a year, which can be done on a Saturday afternoon. And one of our GWT Discount Club members, 247parts.com, is an online John Deere dealer that carries all sorts of those parts for your service, for accessories, for whatever you need. You're going to visit their website, 247parts.com. You enter code GWT. You're going to get your savings. They'll ship it right to you. All right, now I promised you a couple of specific models, and these are going to carry over from that old video. These still remain true. I want to make sure that you avoid these tractors. I know you're going to hear some folks out there that don't have an issue, but this is a big chunk of money that you're spending on a tractor. And I think there's so many other models out there, so many similar models that you can avoid these ones. If you find a good deal on it, it's a good deal for a reason, okay? So the first model that you want to avoid, if you can, is the Kubota B3350. Just Google that model, Kubota B3350, and then put the word problems after it. You're going to have hours of reading material. They just have issues up and down the board with their DPF, their regen. It's just a constant battle. Yes, there's some stories of it being covered under warranty, but there's a lot more stories of it not being covered under warranty. If you wanna get that series, but save a little bit of money, look for the Kubota B2650, or you can look at the new generation now, the Kubota LX series, the LX2610 and the LX3310. Both of those are gonna perform very well for you. Just do yourself a favor and avoid the 3350. Now, John Deere's not off the hook here either. They do have a problem child of their own, and I was bit by this one myself several years ago. In fact, I had a John Deere 2320 and had that model, that specific tractor sold. Actually, I was still working out of this garage we're standing in right now at my house, and I had just taken that tractor and moved around to the back of the house uh, to get it out of the way for a little bit of time. When I went to turn that tractor back on and move it back up this way, Guess what? I heard a loud clanking noise right underneath the floorboard. I turned the tractor off, I hopped off and looked underneath and there was just hydraulic oil spilling down. I had sheared off the drive shaft where the U-joint is at and the way that mine broke just happened to break inside the transaxle. So this turned out to be over a $4,000 repair. I had to notify the customer who had bought the tractor but not taken delivery yet. And in turn, they wanted to cancel that. I don't blame them at all. And I sold that tractor for parts to somebody handy who could fix it on their own. And another John Deere model that had similar problems for a few years was the John Deere 2305. So again, 2320, 2305, do your homework on those. If they had the U-joints replaced, it's not gonna be much of an issue. The problem was that there was no instruction in the manual that told owners to grease those U-joints. This were tucked way up underneath there. There was no easy way to access it, no way to really know about it. And so they would dry out, they would seize up, they would fail. Mine just happened to fail in the most expensive way. So again, I'd encourage you to just plug those models in and type the word problems after it. You're gonna have all sorts of reading material. You know, if you think the deal is too good to be true, there's probably a reason why it's priced so low just to get rid of it. And at the very least, ask that seller the questions. Ask them if these parts were replaced, what the service history was like, what they know about it, because maybe they did something to correct that problem ahead of time. But the last thing you wanna do is get yourself into an unknown. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed that and it helps you out with your tractor buying purchase. If you wanna learn more about tractors, make sure you hit that subscribe button and check out our hundreds of other videos. We can show you different tractor models, tractors in action, different attachments as well. And speaking of that, when it comes time to make your tractor attachment purchases, we can help you out. Visit goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship tractor attachments all over the country. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.